A huge volcano in southwest Iceland has erupted after weeks of intense activity. Iceland's Prime Minister has declared a state of emergency. Authorities had already evacuated 4,000 people from the area. They'd also closed the nearby Blue Lagoon geothermal spa, which is one of Iceland's most popular tourist attractions. Uh, joining us now in the studio, we've got uh, weather journalist Nathan Rao on this one. Nathan, we all think back now to uh, 2010 and uh, the repercussions of uh, the, the last big eruption in Iceland. What are you hearing? What are you sensing about this one so far? Right. Now, this has all been coming in in the last few hours because this has happened pretty much within, within hours. This has been described as a significant event, probably the biggest eruption in this part of Iceland, which is in the southwest of Iceland, the Reykjanes Peninsula. Maybe people will, won't have heard of that, but this has been described as the biggest eruption yeah. in that area. Well, people that will have in. heard of that Blue Lagoon Spa. A lot of, you know, Iceland's yeah. very popular, certainly as a weekend uh, destination for people in the UK. Yes, it absolutely is. And, and we have to think in situations like this, we, we're always thinking back to 2010 when the Ayafjatayak Katar Whole, uh, um, volcano erupted and that was the biggest disruption of European airspace since World War II because of the ash cloud that that thing pumped into the sky. This is what the authorities are going to be watching with this volcano. It is only a matter of hours old, this event, so everybody is keeping their eyes on this at the moment, but they are going to be watching the lava which appears to be flowing southwestwards towards the town of Grindavik. Now, this is the town that has been evacuated 4,000 people. The police have declared that it is a major event, obviously, and the civil defence have warned people not to go anywhere near this volcano as this event progresses. So we are all going to be watching now. I mean, we can see those scenes now. This is lava erupting from this volcano. Now, Iceland is quite a small country. People may not know the sort of logistics of where things are. This is about 40 kilometres from Reykjavik. So the airport, the Keflavik airport in Reykjavik, is still working. However, we saw the disruption in 2010 from Ayafetaik Atoll. When that erupted, we'll have all eyes on this now to see what's going to happen in the next coming hours and days. And Iceland, I understand, has been on high alert for volcanoes since November. Yes. There's been hundreds of, of smaller ones. Yes. Now, Iceland is a very, very seismic place. We are on literally on the cusp of the Eurasian plate and the North American plate, so they get a lot of volcanic earthquake activity over there. The authorities have been watching this because it's been rumbling for the last few weeks. And actually, before this volcano erupted last night, the Icelandic Met Office put out a warning saying this thing may blow, and it did. So they have been watching this for volcanic activity. It's not unusual seismic activity within this part of the world. As I said, they're sitting on, on, on tectonic place hence why places like the blue lagoon are so popular because you know seismic you know this is this is what what makes the, the the hot springs and things however this has now erupted and of course we'll be looking at things like aftershocks and another interesting fact is at the base of this volcano a 3.5 kilometer crack has formed and that is looking to expand so we'll be looking again to see how this lava flows from that volcano over the coming hours and of course any ash cloud apparently this was visible from Reykjavik which is about 40 miles 40 kilometres away. Uh, and you'll be keeping us right up to date throughout the programme today with anything that we hear. And I, and I just wonder, you're talking there about uh, this particular uh, fault uh, sitting on the Eurasian plate and the North American plate. And we hear today about this earthquake as well overnight in China. Yes. Could there be a connection? Well, the plates are connected. I mean, I, I wouldn't hazard to say that they are directly linked. You know, seismic activity is always going to be linked in some way. This is a different different part of the world, obviously quite a long way away. This is in the Gansu province in northwest China, a quite a sizable earthquake there, 6.2 on the Richter scale. That's the latest coming in on the, on the measurements on that. Um, a lot of seismic activity going on. I wouldn't say they are directly directly linked um, these two events, uh, Iceland on one side of the world and China on the other. However, seismic activity and tectonic plates, they're, they're always working together. Well, look, bearing in mind, I suppose, what did happen in 2010 uh, and the disruption it caused so many people, you're going to keep across events for us and, and report back in yes, as absolutely. and when you hear absolutely. anything. Sorry, Pippa. I was just going to say about what's happening in China at the moment. At least 105 people, we understand, so yeah, far yeah, have been tragic. killed. At this time of year, it is very cold. Yes. Those people that will have lost... Everything. Yes, and they are, there are advisories out in that part of the world for power cuts, water supply shortages, all the things you'd expect to go with an earthquake. This is in North 
West China. So you're right, it's in the north, it's cold, they're going to be without power, without their supplies. It is a tragic event. Um, 220 people injured as well. The authorities are, of course, on the scene over there right now, trying to, 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 to rescue and, and, to, and to pull this together. But yeah, tragic event in China this morning. It seems a very, very... Uh, a very disturbing morning for, yeah. for geological events. And as we, as we look at those search efforts, I think uh, one of the problems is, is that the houses there are built of, of clay. Yes, yes, they are. Um, I mean, parts of the world that have earthquakes, um, I'm, I'm not sure about northwest China, but the, uh, the, the buildings are sort of geared towards preparation for this. However, this is a rural area in northwest China, as you say, made of clay, so probably not the best prepared. So um, thoughts with people in northwest China this morning.